Hello, everyone. Uh, I have Kyle Thrash, the director of The Sentence of Michael Thompson, and a, a docu short title that I always get wrong. I always think it's The Sentencing of Michael Thompson, but no, it is The Sentence of Michael Thompson. It's a docu short uh, premiering at South by Southwest as part of, let me see if I get this right, docu short program number one. Um, it's playing, let's see, as of, as of recording, I think it's, I think, I think it's got like a bunch of screenings. Um, but yeah, um, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks, Austin. Yeah, happy to be here, man. Yeah, no problem. And especially with how hectic South by Southwest is, I mean, goodness, I've, I've had two interviews a day for the past week. So man it, it, it's been nuts uh for yeah you've been busy between i'm sure between screenings and interviews you probably don't have that much time to yourself oh yeah like and like sometimes i i have to um uh, um i have to kind of like okay i'll i'll watch this tomorrow because i just don't have time after interviews and stuff like that but um right. but like one of the big ones was the halo press day which i did should be up by now uh Fingers crossed. Um, but um, we just got the video files in for that today, um, like three hours ago. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been hectic, but um, we're not here to talk about hectic stuff. We're here to talk about your film. Um, your, sorry, DocuShort. Um, it's all the same to me, really. Um, but I've got one big question. I always, I always like to ask different questions when I talk about a documentary, whether they're short or full feature. Um, I was talking with uh, Frank Marshall yesterday, um, and I think one, one of my favorite questions has become, how, how did you learn about the subject? How did you learn about Michael Thompson? Yeah, so I got approached by the nonprofit The Last Prisoner Project, and they do a bunch of amazing work um, for cannabis um, constituents. Um, so people that are incarcerated currently for, for nonviolent cannabis offenses. And they do a lot of work in terms of trying to get clemency and trying to get legislators uh, to change policy. And I got approached by them. Um, and I, I looked at, I looked at uh, kind of the work that they were doing and felt like if I could put a, a story and a face to these statistics, um, I felt like it would be really impactful. And I I got to know Michael and, and we talked and I felt like he had a story he wanted to tell. Um, and he was, you know, just kind of this really charismatic guy and, and very vulnerable. And I felt like if he, if we could tell his story, um, I felt like people would be able to take a look at Last Prisoner Project's organization and kind of help everyone, you know, these other people that are still incarcerated for cannabis, um, you know, as, as the, as the country begins to legalize. So, yeah, so that's where I started. Yeah, and I think it, it, it's an important thing to talk about because these aren't crimes that we're talking about, like um, someone goes, goes, gets high, and then robs a bank. Uh, now, obviously, that does probably happen. Uh, you should probably stick to the uh, non-Indica stuff if, you, if you're doing that. Um, but... Um, um, but yeah, uh, so did you already know about the war on drugs or did you just learn through osmosis through, throughout filming this? Well, obviously, I, I feel like the war on drugs is, has in some ways touched, you know, almost everyone in this country, particularly, obviously, communities of color that have been most affected by it. Um, but <clears throat> we did it, my producer and I, Ian, and and the, the other director on the project, Haley, we did a bunch of research um, into the war on drugs. And, and our film is just kind of the surface, you know? I mean, we, we, we primarily focus just on cannabis and, and just on Michael's story and, and really talking more about today because there's been a lot of amazing films and, and journalists that have written about and covered the war on drugs and how it's affected so many communities and, and, and devastated them. Um, our film, really is about Michael's, you know, last year incarcerated and his clemency and what, you know, the grassroots effort it took to get him out. So it touched on, it obviously touches on the war on drugs and 
um, but it really tries to focus on, you know, on cannabis particularly, but also so, um, the future of cannabis, right? Because we're, as we're beginning to legalize, the, the laws are changing. So Michael's in a state where it is legal in Michigan. So that was, that was something that when the, the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, came into office, she ran on cannabis reform. And so we felt like there was a good chance that Michael would get out. So we really put the pressure on her to stand up for the things that she spoke about when she was trying to get elected to say, you know, that no one should suffer lifelong consequences for nonviolent cannabis offenses. So, you know, between the work of Last Prisoner Project and a bunch of other amazing people put the pressure on the governor and, and eventually, you know, got him out. So it's really, but still it's, Michael's had a long journey and has a really, you know, long story to, to share. And, and we just have kind of just the surface of it. We're hoping obviously that the film being shorter, that, it, it, you know, a lot of people will check it out and be able to kind of, uh, you know, go and explore other nonprofits and, and continue the work that the, hopefully the film is creating a conversation for. Yeah, for sure. There's like tons of organizations that have popped up over the past, gosh, five years, maybe even shorter than that, that have just been really great about, okay, yes, we're about legalizing, but we're also about these 10,000 other things, you know, um, associated with um, drug-related drug uh, offenses. Um, and I think a big one has been just, um, it, it, it's, I, I don't know the statistics right now. Um, I haven't looked at them in a few years. Um, but I mean, it's one of the most drug-related offenses are, are, are one of the most um, make up a lot of our prisons. Um, and um, it's, that's one of the things that people are trying to say, hey, government, you've already um, done this. Why don't you just grant clemency for the people who already have been in prison or are in prison or um, things like that? And I think correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I think there's a movement now to where, like with the um, letting uh, former, um, uh, I don't know the word for it, maybe, I, I don't think the word would be former felons, but, um, um, but people who have been to prison, um, there's, there's a similar movement to get um, people who have been to prison to vote uh, again, which is great. I mean, that's stupendous, but, um, I think, what do you hope, sorry for the massive lead up to the question, but what do you, what do you hope for the future of either, you can either pick nonviolent crimes or drug related crimes or anything that just kind of seems like, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I feel like one of the things that <clears throat> um, the the cannabis companies can be doing um, is providing um, some restorative justice by, you know, um, creating social equity. So this is going to be, you know, billions and billions and billions of dollars coming in, you know, with legal sales of, of cannabis in our country, and they can reinvest that into the communities that were most harmed, as well as provide licenses first to the people that were incarcerated or affected by the war on drugs. Um, so I feel like that's, that I feel like is a, a big, would be a big step in hiding and helping right some of the wrongs, you know, that the war on drugs has caused. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think definitely that's the right track because I think just right now, even with provisional, um, legalization like i know a lot of states are medicinal only or um, provisional in other ways and some companies use that to their advantage to be like oh well we're really protective of this or things like that um where they have to do things that are beholden to the state or or um where it's like well we we can't like one one big thing right now is um Doctors can't say, hey, 
I, I would recommend uh, like a prescription for um, uh, medical marijuana. You can't just do that, like because it's a state regulated thing, and no one wants to get in trouble, or or the uh, proverbial hand in the cookie jar kind of thing. Um, but um, besides that, I, I kind of want to get more technical. Um, this is kind of a cliche question, but um, what challenges did you run into while making this story? I think, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was obviously, it was, it was during COVID. So that was, that was one of them, you know, for sure. I think, I think the biggest one was, was trying to uh, distill and kind of summate Michael's story into a short film, right? This is someone who was incarcerated for 26 years, you know, um, he, he had this long life that I feel like we could have gone into in, in different stages of what he's went through while incarcerated. I also, you know, as the family members that we follow, his, his lawyer, Kim, I feel like is an amazing character. She has a story to tell also. And also just the, the details of the case, right? You know, this was his, a friend of his that was a, a undercover informant, you know, for the, for the police. Um, that he was, Michael was, you know, giving this, this weed to him, uh, that he said, you know, Michael said it was going to be his last time doing this. He didn't want to work with this guy. And he met up with him trying to, trying to help out his friend that needed it, uh, sold it to him and, um, you know, and was, was given this long sentence. The judge at the time, um, you know, denied a plea deal that would have resulted in probation. So there's so many different aspects of the case that I feel like um, that we could have gone into. Obviously, policing cannabis. There's there's so many aspects with that, and and so it's it's such a large topic. As you were asking me about the war on drugs, there's so many details. It's very, you know, it has this very long um, history in our country, and a lot of injustice there in terms of what leads to something like Michael's case and. But so we, it, I think one of the biggest challenges was really trying to distill down what would make an impactful short film that would help create awareness for these other people that are still incarcerated. So it was tough to kind of leave some, leave some scenes on the floor, leave some details on the floor to really try to keep it focused so that an audience would watch it and, and, and still want to go out and kind of learn more and, and help these other people that are incarcerated. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing, documentary short or, or documentary, um, to kind of laser in on. Because I think with modern documentaries, what you get is kind of, kind of a comprehensive view of the situation. And that's not always the best thing um, for a documentary, because then the person doesn't go out and research further. Um, like, I love Summer of Soul, but it's like, okay, I've seen the concert, now what? And it's like, well, okay, you know, uh, there's not really action to take. And with a lot of these net Netflix documentaries and docu-series and what have you, this explosion of those, um, it seems like, okay, we want to present the full picture instead of, here's the thing I want you to focus in on, and here's the thing you know, that actually matters. Um, and yeah, yeah, and I think if, if ever this was to be adapted into a film, I, I wouldn't want um, anything lengthened too much. Um, mm. Like, I, yeah, yeah, it would just be like, well, I yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, just to add on, sorry to interrupt, I, I feel like um, kind of what we were trying to do was, you know, was obviously, you know, try to um, connect with Michael's family and what they go through. Obviously, we, we all have loved ones and, and, um, and seeing what she went through and kind of what it, what it feels like to have a father and a loved one incarcerated her instance, you know, um, her father, um, I felt like you know, by taking kind of a uh, more humanistic approach, I hoped that it would kind of people maybe that um, 
maybe don't want to learn about this issue or aren't interested in it, maybe um, maybe they would be able to kind of see the see the details through her eyes and maybe connect with it in a different way. So that was one of the things that we tried to do was just from a filmmaking approach is try to be a little more humanistic and follow kind of uh, the human side of what it feels like for a sentence like that to be given. And it's not just Michael that goes through it, but his, you know, his whole family, you know, that was also really touched by it. Yeah, because I think there is a sometimes um, with documentaries, there's there's um, there's spraying going on where it's like, okay, well, but he did this, or he or this person did that, and it's like, well, but that doesn't matter. Put that away. Put that in the box and just put it put it away. And honestly, I think if anyone has anyone watching has a South by pass, I, I check it out. I mean, just, I don't see why not. I, I, I feel like this is the perfect film for this, uh, um, this is the perfect selection for this festival, especially in the lineup you, that, that you're in. Um, because I feel like sometimes shorts, um, are those things where it's like it only becomes important once the Oscars say, "Oh, hey, here's the animated shorts and live action or documentary short or things like that." But really, it's important all year round. And I think another wonderful one is "Long Line of Ladies." Um, mm. That's a, that's a great one. Um, yeah, there's so many so many um, I've seen, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Because of course, long line of ladies was beautiful. Yeah, um, just the way that was shot and the subject matter and their approach. I thought the filmmakers and the cinematographers was also the editor. I thought they did a beautiful job in, in telling a um, a great story and an impactful one, and also kind of just like a beautiful cultural one. Um, yeah, so that one resonated with with me too uh, in our block. Yeah, and. Um... Yeah, and, and people can see it all around at the South by thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, Kyle, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Austin. Yeah, I hope people check out the movie. I hope people check out um, lastprisonerproject.com to learn more about how they, they can help um, with you know these uh, cannabis constituents and continue the work that the film is, is doing. So thanks for having me uh, and, and appreciate the platform to speak about it. Yeah, and all, all those links will be up below, including a screener, a screening link for the South by Southwest schedule thing that they're doing. Um, but yeah, th th thank you so much again, Kyle. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate it, man.